All right, gentlemen, it does sound like we have a draft ready to go, so why don't we go ahead and head right into it? I know, this one's fast. I don't have to worry about an hour and a half of vamping. Here we go. So, OG, will they continue their path towards being a two-time major champion, or will Secret shove them down into the lower bracket? Let's begin oh, oh. with OG Dota opening up with a first pick, Tidehunter. Oh, fly. BMing Puppy here. Chen and Enigma bands. You know, it's the we, MVP strat. That's yeah. why MVP did to beat Secret. You know, when, we, when I talk about uh, Secret being greedy, and that the way they actually make it up is by having this type of jungling heroes that can actually help a lot. Like They're the greedy, Enig but only for a very... Uh, the, the Enigma only for a very uh, short period of time, but Chen not really even advanced. I still think with this two Banner, Enchantress might still be able to fulfill the same role. But or I, CM. Um... Uh, CM's pretty. I don't really. I don't, I don't think CM's I don't really fancy hero. CM that much doing that kind of thing that Chen and Chantress mm -hmm. and Enigma does. Secret have not run a single Enchantress in their last ten games, so it's not a go-to pick for them. Yeah, but they at the very least right now they have the profit, so they can play a very up-tempo game. Even though I don't think their profit is like as strong as MVP's profit or the better team, like the better teams that run the hero. But so we'll do you see. think they grab Weehaz and Poker here? That's been, they've picked it like five out of their last six yeah. games. Five games, three and two with Invoker on secret. Bro, well, Lion has been like, so, picked so much, like yesterday, even like most of the games we saw Lion pick as a support. Like, the hero has been on the rise. Mm. Is it maybe because of just Aether Lens or you need some. I'm not even seeing all lines go Aether Lens. I've seen some stuff go It's just land that goes for that build. Yeah, I'd say a lot of the. Most of them got gone blink like first. Yeah. Blink, four stuff, standard line build. I think a lot of the other supports just receive these, like the the small nerfs, and suddenly line, lines just kind of come back into favor. And the, I think the other biggest reason is the lane, because lion. Why lion wasn't picked before? Like during TF, I remember, like we were, all, oh my god, you, then you have a lion because the lane is so hard for you. But right now, because with the lane, it could even switch back to the the older days, and it it makes lion much more viable because you're you are much l less likely to get contested from the off laner. And his level 1 Hex is just really good compared to what it was before. He's also a better zoner now with the, the higher base damage from, I think it was like two patches ago, so... And, like, Lina got nerfed, so, you know, some of his somewhat close counterparts are not as strong. What about Beastmaster? Still out there and available, and it's something OG typically love to go for here. We saw it many times yesterday. Depends if they're comfortable running it in the jungle, because mm -hmm. they already picked up Tidehunter, so... They've somewhat locked up that offlane position, so here is like Batrider and Beastmaster, while still possible, it's harder to fit them in. Have, have they actually done that on support? The Beastmaster jungle? Yeah. OG? Not that I, I think it's more called. common that No-Tail actually plays it. Yeah, No-Tail oh. does play yeah, it. Yeah, they, they've done this, they've done actually safe lane Beastmaster, yeah. Yeah, mid Beastmaster. I, I think that if Secret actually, because Secret is on Dire, if Secret actually tries to run a draft around the Roshan, then we might actually see OG do that. We might actually yep. see OG pick vision, a hero cool. for vision just to control the and Roshan. And Beastmaster with the Lone Druid, the attack speed, there's a mm -hmm. lot of good synergy there, and I, I feel like the Lone Druid gives him enough like early game fast, or when he hits his, has a good timing that kind of goes well with the Beastmaster. Do they play Lone Druid on No-Tail? Does anyone know? Mostly, yeah. Uh, it's been No-Tail. Almost Miracle. Miracle's played in the yeah. mid lane. It's been all over the place. Versatility is something been playing it more lately. I want yeah, Miracle played at mid and yeah. one game. Moon played at off lane one game, so they all three, all three, of, <laughs> all three core players can play the yeah. Lord So usually we see Phoenix as a response to it. What do you think that Secret should pick as? to kind of deal with the Lone Druid, either by playing very aggressively, or by having percentage spells, mm. by pushing. Don't know Pi to really... Ursa's the other hero, and you mentioned being able to do the Roshan. I actually like... Uh... I actually like Bounty Hunter maybe, like, you want to pressure him early when he's trying to jungle, catch him out, but... At the, levels 1 to 5. Yeah, especially. at the same, because I, I know Phoenix is really good versus the bear, but it, it's not extremely good at stopping him from farming early. It's like, it's good later when the Lone Druid is farmed. You're talking about two teams, uh, OG with the number 2 averaging jungle farm at 15 minutes and secret number 3. Bounty Hunter is something that these teams could look at to kind of prevent that. Oh, that's a triple ban on Puppy. Yeah, I was actually kind of expecting if they wanted Enchantress, they would have already gone for it in the first phase. But because they didn't go for it, so I think that they have another plan in store for them. I also like this from Secret. Yeah, you already have Tidehunter, so maybe they wouldn't go for the bat, but they've had a lot of success with it, and it's just a very versatile hero. Can go to the off lane, depending on what the it, mid matchup is, can go mid, can really go to jungle. Really good versus the Prophet. Like, Prophet yeah. is very weak versus heroes that can catch him up easily, especially yeah. Nyx. And Lion. And bat. Lion really suffers from the Napalm as well, and he's very slow. Would you put it past either of these teams to sneak their way in with a Brood? 
Mm, not this game. Probably not, not Seeker. Probably I mean, we saw the Tide vs. Brood matchup yesterday. That probably was a, not this game. That means, that means MP would have to be like not in the off lane, or Tidehunter would have to also not be in the off lane, which yeah. I think is both. If OG weak. picks it, it's like some cheese mid brood or you yeah. know, something like that. Like if Secret doesn't have very good heroes when dealing with the brood, then possibly. But for Secret, I think they won't no take way. the brood. Yeah. It's very mm. unlikely. So the Zeus got banned by OG. Maybe, maybe expecting a, a global mm. strat. Secret have around the Spectre before. Zeus is quite good against the opening two picks as well. Just the the passive against the yeah, Lurker. The it has stops at tide blink. It's it's quite annoying. Mm, basically, like it's like just a really good hero that outputs a huge amount of damage yeah. and you know vision as well. Like we we saw it yesterday in a few series that how important vision was in the game. So, I mean, probably they just don't want to play against that hero. Well, if you want Vision, you guys mentioned the Beastmaster. He's still out there. Beastmaster, Night Stalker, yeah. Those are the two primary heroes that provide Vision. And obviously, Bounty Hunter, you can still consider him somewhat of a hero that provides Vision and in information to the team. Slark somewhat yeah. too. But Secret already showed their hand with their two supports, right? They have a uh, Lion. Sh I, I think that the Shaker is more or less confirmed as a support, because I, I don't really feel there's a high chance that Secret would do Shaker off lane and Prophet's going to the safe lane. Yeah, it I doesn't think seem like an envy it's, it's not their style, so I... Unless they wanted to run like a greedy jungle Prophet, but I feel like there's plenty of ways for OG to punish it. Yeah. Wow. I, <laughs> well, or maybe they just play the greedy wow, game. Wow, King. So they're going very greedy. Um... Unless this is a core hero for no tier, because if you think about it, it could be. If, if you, you think, don't have a mid match. Yeah, if you yet. think about it, the way OG plays, like they have all these mid, uh, safe lane heroes on no tier, which makes space like Panda, Beastmaster, Stalker, all the heroes that you guys talk about. So if they were to actually do that, it, it fits the Sand King's criteria as a tempo. It's also more catch for the Prophet, or I mean, potentially we see like that Ratty Envy Anti Mage type hero. Ember Spirit. It's probably. It's a lot of catch I mean, it's probably quite difficult against Lone Druid because Lone Druid has a timing. Like you can still try and do that, but you might actually be unable to defend all your towers. Like Ben, would you think that AM might be able to survive against this tower lineup? Like, do you think that his teams can actually bite? Okay, probably not. Uh, I think they're glad they got Sankey now. They've got much better catch for him. Uh... That's the one kind of insta uh, They still need more lockdown though. They, they yeah, still have, they want they one still more hero with insta catch. They still have Disruptor that can catch There's Ember. Disruptor, there's Rubik for the instant lift. There's like Shaman as Rubik well. is not that great against Ember, I think. Like, the lift is, even though it's yeah. instant, because it's very difficult to get the lift on I'd Ember. I'd rather get like Shatter Shaman or, or Disruptor. disruptor yeah. yeah, I'd rather this tool. It's easier. It's also, the problem is because crit's most like, if it's going to be a support sanking, that means it's going to be crit's here, and Blind mm. normally doesn't play those kind of heroes. Oh! So. The little green man comes out. The push. Well, we, we yeah. mentioned this was likely to be the dynamic coming into the game. Was Secret trying to aim for the super late game, split push, very spread the map, and that OG has the potential uh, to do you run think at that, them? I think this is a call point now, because I, I, I know yeah. that, uh, I, I, don't, I think I remember seeing them run this before, yeah. like no tail is playing the Pugna, he goes for the uh, Aether Lens plus uh, Aghanim's build. And I feel like it's definitely pushed, because like the Pugna ward doesn't really yeah. counter any of these heroes. It's, They're picking this for the push. It's pretty good mostly. versus the Lion, I It's think. also really good with the Lone Druid Bear, because you just keep healing up the Spirit Bear mm. as it pushes. Like, there's that synergy between those two heroes is pretty absurd. The, the plan is really clear so right now. Five, five men versus split push. Who's the best pushing support? There's Witch Doctor, there's Shaman. Shadow Shaman, which is a little greedier. I think Shaman's... Probably a scarce. Witch, Witch Doctor is sustain and heal. They actually, I mean, the, the, you can heal up the one target using the Pugna. I mean, I mean, they're still Dazzle if they really want to go down that route. I think it'll be Dazzle or Shaman for OG yeah, if they're yeah. going to commit to this. I think um, Dazzle's maybe the if, more if safe and well rounded. If Crit is playing the Sand King, then the last hero will be Fly's hero. So I, I expect it to be somewhat a more defensive yes. hero. So yeah. right now, Secret has to pick. Uh, they might actually put Weeha, because I, I we are Meg, maybe? We are on M I've seen them put Weeha on Ember, Ember before, but I guess this game, it's more more chance that they actually put uh, MV on that, and no, oh. actually, so Weeha is going to play Ember. This is a really interesting clash in styles, both teams uh, looking very committed to different strategies. Weeha is really good versus the Lone Druid. And it's quite it's a good link in this game. And as it's well. quite good versus the the Pugna ward because you can actually just go behind and kill the ward with the hero. And it sort of compensates that Lion is quite a bit weak in the lane as well. Isn't their anti push just non-existent though? Yeah, but their their plan right now is 
they want to be able to have a good laning phase That's and then try push. to split push. Yeah. Yeah. The swarm can have good synergy with Ember if you don't kill them off right away with the minus mm -hmm. armor, so it's a nice little side effect. My goodness! Yes, no, no, Commander bear. bear, but who is Super Bear? No, who is the support? Support. Support Sanking. Support Pugna. No, Pugna is the support. That's a greedy support duo. They, they have they are they are like this lineup where they super buff the laundry bear. Yeah, <laughs> hey, it's all about the bear. And it gives them also a good reliable lockdown for the Weaver and Ember with uh -huh. the, the duel as well, so... It's a really good Lincoln's game now. And you have uh, you have a hero that can actually maybe even want to go Shadow Bit to catch the Ember and the Prophet, so I, I think I see a really clear idea what OG has right now. They want a 5-man and they want to have a hero that catches them out, so it will enable them to actually go into the temple of 5 manning So, Ben, key, would you see a key to stopping that if you're secret? Strong lanes? Win your lanes? Like, support Pugna is not that strong. Uh, but I don't know, I kind of see them having a hard time with the Lion and Shaker, so mostly up on the Nature's Prophet, get around, secure their lanes, maybe sack one do, of the lanes. Do you think they can actually do like Weaver, dual lane bottom to try and win the lane as well? Well, and something different going to yeah. be coming out from both of these squads right now. The game getting started rapid fire quick. Let's send it over to our David duo right now. Eldie and Gods, gentlemen, take it away. Thank you very much, Dakota. Here we go. OG versus Secret. Best of three. I'm LD. Joined by Gods. We're David and David. Let's get this show on the road. This is a hype match. I'm ready for it. Team seemed to be as well. Who do you think is going to take it? I mean, my, my gut says OG. That's even before seeing drafts, just coming in the series. It just, they still feel like that team that's in really hot form. And despite winning the last major, they still seem incredibly motivated, incredibly focused. Every time I see the guys, they're just focused on Dota. They just give off this vibe and impression that they're here, they're ready to win. Winning one major isn't what it's about. Winning this major isn't what it's about. It's going to be about winning another major, winning another TI. Winning every major. Or winning ATI. And it, it, this team is not satisfied with just that one major. It's not a team that's like, okay, we've won now, now let's just kind of relax and we can kind of not not treat every every event as seriously no not not at all the case with og yeah, and they're you... showing they're not like a one-hit wonder they they've done well in recent land tournaments as well they did well at mdl and they they're continuing to play in incredible dota on the other side you've got secret fantastic individual talent at times it has felt like they've struggled to to gel as a team often really strong individual performances like we saw puppies enigma and v's ember spirit in the past that have carried them almost throwing the team on their back so let's see how well secrets teamwork Works out this time around as we get underway, unpaused and ready to go. 30 seconds until the rune spawns. Already we can see wards getting planted down as OG and Secret are going to duke it out over this top rune. Looks like uh, the bear's going to be the ma the one down in the river for now. Curious to see how the lane step is, because something it looks like OG might be doing and can well do is kind of having the Legion commander in a somewhat solo situation against a Nature's, a nature's Prophet. The Sankin can play very greedy and kind of roam heavy. Already has a smoke picked up at level 1 with boots, so I think we'll see Crit very active on the map early on uh, for the first maybe 3 to 4 minutes before transitioning into the jungle. And Fly, he can just kind of help out wherever he feels he needs to. He can help get the tide in early level level 2, level 3 by helping the off lane, he can harass mid a bit. He doesn't need to necessarily secure no tails lane because of how good LC can do in a 1v1 against the Nature's Prophet. Well, I think expect the same from Secret. Shaker, great at counter ganking and relieving that yeah. pressure. You've also got a boots first line for Pylai Dai, so yeah, we may see both teams with the supports moving a lot early. Crit already rotating in towards the mid lane, hanging out. I, th I think both teams may be expecting the gank as Pylai Dai is going to wrap around early, go for some harassment here on Moon. Eternal Envy has skilled up the Sakuji level 1, they get off the stun. Moon taking some heavy harassment here and does back away. Rotating in those puppies. Gonna have the fissure block. This could well be our first blood. Likely will be down into the river. Moon's gonna go. Pops the fairy fire. Crits here. Can he get the stun off in time? Ah, it's too late. And already secret. Get on the board. Very nice rotation by puppy and not a whole lot Moon could do about it. Yeah, just not ready for the Earthshaker to be up there early on. Expecting him to maybe be protecting mid from an early sanking gank. And something secret did, they got down an early ward by the Radiant Ancients, which just helps give them vision and keep track of the Sanking movements and kind of reveal if he does go for that early smoke, if you're if he happens to do so around that area. So helping out secure the early lanes and just monitor the Sanking rotations very effectively. Well, we used to see this a lot back when uh, Silar was played a lot of Longura, that this hero, it can excel in the 1v1 matchup, especially against melee heroes. And Miracle right now sitting 8-3 and three to the 3-0 and of Weeha. Tried for the Fissure block mid. Misery getting gone on bottom, though. He could be in some trouble. 
Yeah, it looks like Misery is being pursued out here. No tell, trying to chase him down. They get the Decrepify, slowing him, and Crit, meanwhile, getting body blocked by the Trance of Misery. Not quite able to close the gap here. A couple more auto attacks should do the trick. No tail, eating his way through the trees. Misery still retreating, leading them on a merry chase around the world. Now down towards the neutrals. There looks like they might even give up pursuit. They leave Crit as the one man to continue it. He should be able to deny the neutrals unless Crit has a bow strike through the trees, but it's just not long range enough. And while that was all happening, top lane, they do manage to find another kill on... Moon here, so a good deny there by the Nature's Prophet. A second kill for Secret, and thus far, Puppy has been on point with these rotations. He even almost found a kill mid while that chaotic chase bottom was happening. Bit of mis miscommunication and just the coordination not quite there with the, the decrep into Barrow Strike. Crit just couldn't quite find the right angle. He, there was no ward protecting Prophet. He had no idea the Sand King's coming in from behind. They should be able to find a, a path through Fog for Crit to get that stun off, but OG just slightly misplaying it but the laning stage overall is still doing well you've got miracle 1v1 mid against weha kind of a storyline in itself you've got the two kind of 8k mmr players they were the two youngsters who had no real competitive play credentials coming into like the 2016 se season like basically post ti5 and they both got picked up by big tier one teams and so far it's been somewhat more at least recently miracle favored as far as the results go yeah, well, this one, not the easiest matchup for the Ember Spirit, especially on those first few levels, but he is starting to catch up, up to 10 and 2. His Miracle's a big wave pushing in. There's the Fissure, but he's on the wrong side of it. They want to kill up the bear, and they do manage to get the kill, but didn't get the last hit no. there. Bit of XP, but if you get the gold for that, that's huge. That's huge, big especially wave. when you're getting out CS like this. But we continue to see Puppy very active roaming around. He is really making his presence felt on the map, and meanwhile, as for Crit, only level 2, uh, keeping an eye on the jungle here. We're not seeing much in the way of stacks. Just uh, a single double stack, it looks like, at the big camp closest to the Radiant bottom lane. So, thus far, uh, Crit, he's going to look for maybe some ancient stacks, but he is not going to have a fast blinker on the stag on the Sand King. This is not like your kind of old-school FY Sand yeah. King style play. I mean, already Secret have blocked off those Ancients to prevent it from being stacked for the Tidehunter. Recognizing Moon's having a rough time, he's going to want to use that to catch up and... He's got his Iron Talon now. He's fine. Every offlane is dream. Pick up Iron Talon, go in the jungle. Crit down in the river, goes in for the burrow onto Weeha, but it's completely blocked here by the Flame Guard, turns with the chains, and Crit really in trouble now, but he does manage to grab it in misery, Puppy slams the door, says no. Meanwhile, Weeha on the run, there's the Savage Roar to try and allow continued pursuit, but there's a stun. Pylai die with the counterplay, and now the Hex follow up onto Miracle, still working his way onto Puppy, has the boots advantage here with the Orb of Venom, so shouldn't be able to get the kill, pulls the bear back, turns the other way immediately, Miracle with very quick reaction, but a two hero stun the bear, bear as he well as the hero, he pops it, no root just yet, Miracle manning up, juking, trying to out fog, pilot by root, get it done! Ouch. The Orb of Venom slow though, still going, and Crit wandles in. Burrow strike rage, he's just out of it, but he might be able to close the gap, barely at that he will. Burrow gets the last hit, gets the kill, while Misery, while that's going on, diving the top lane together with Eternal Envy. They went really deep for this one, and they did manage to kill off Moon's Tidehunter again, a third death for Moon here in the off lane. I, I, Miracle pulls his bear back while his ranged attack is mid-air, knowing he's got the kill, just so he can go for the lion there. And That was great stuff. It was a, a great individual play, unfortunately. Just, he couldn't get a root. First he didn't get one on Puppy, then he didn't get one on Pi. But he does, I mean, it kind of comes out a bit of an even trade as far as that exchange goes, but it's secret of crushing this top lane. Envy's having a fantastic time getting farm. He's been involved in three kills now, and it's been a really strong start coming out from the Weaver. The good news for OG, hasn't transitioned into a tower loss yet, so they still maintain some control over that big camp where the Iron Talon what's, what's shenanigans can happen. He's kind of sitting around this mid lane as if he wants to go in for a kill on, on mid before Lone Druid hits level 6. He's almost playing like a Clinks. Yeah, he's hunting for a courier. For, yeah, he's, he, I think he, he caught wind of the courier nearby. Oh, they do have a sentry though, so they're prepared for Envy to move in. Got the Hill D Ward and Moon will do the Iron Talon thing. Yeah. So it looks like Envy in the end is going to head back towards the top lane. Still holding the Mango here, but you can see Secret, Pilot Die already level 4 on the line. He's gotten a lot out of all these kills. Very fast level 6 coming for him. The the LC completely free farming bottom lane though. So as far as the actual lanes go and how the, the matchups have gone in terms of farm, LC and Lone Druid both winning their respective lanes quite They're, handily. And even Fly, he's got 17 yeah, CS on a bottom. Pugna. They make their way in. Can they finish Misery? Burrow Strike coming through to follow this one up. Last hits there. Don't get the dual damage, but they do get the kill. Yeah. Still 
still decent for them, even even without getting the, the dual damage. Just keeping Misery down. He's got okay CS. I mean, you're an offlane. You're not expected to do particularly well. He's kind of uh, a little bit behind the tide in, in terms of levels as well as farm. But um, you kind of typically expect the Nature's Prophet to be able to do a bit more because you've got the trains. Oh, you've got a bit lane. more money. Looks credit. like there's a rotation here. Puppy has a fissure ready. He's going to cut off Moon at the pass. Another nice fissure block. And Moon, really nothing he could do about this. They're going to turn on a Misery even arrives. He runs in with the Hacker Smash, but Secret collect another kill. Moon and a feeding frenzy here top lane. Four deaths. Tower hasn't fallen yet. They're going to have to rotate the Legion Commander now. Does have the max overwhelming odds, so it can do a lot to stall this push together with Fly Blasting. But already a Fissure's come through. Drops it and quickly going to drive Secret back. They take a lot of punishment here from the overwhelming odds, and that will end the aggression, saving the tower as well. OG committing heavily to not giving up this tier one top. And Fly recognizing from that fissure, like as soon as he TPs in that, yeah, there's a ward up there. So they take out a second secret ward around kind of this radiant top tier one as well as their own ancients. They've, this really protects their jungle. Their ancients, this, the secret shop camp, as well as this top tier one tower, suddenly becomes a lot more difficult for secrets to take down early. And it feels like a lot of the secret early game plan was going to be centered around contesting that contesting the tide farm around the secret shop taking the, the fast team on tower and og have completely shut that window sh closed that window and prevented that from happening they've done a really good job here for rotating the lanes we saw pugna getting a lot out of the off lane while the tide hunter was in the jungle then when the legion rotates immediately crit heads to bottom after clearing out the stacks already crit up to 1700 gold here 1670 to be exact on the Sand King, and he did not farm or stack much at all early on, so the Blink Dagger is still going to come at a pretty good clip. As we see OG begin to congregate in the mid lane, fly. Oh, what a rune, the Arcane rune for the reduced cooldown, another blast, sub four seconds. He'll let it go. Does get Fissure, though, has to be careful not to get caught up by Weeha. But on fresh creep wave arise, they really want to commit to the siege. Puppy, Fissure on cooldown for eight seconds, fly somehow tanking the tower aggro, but we'll juggle that one off quickly. And it seems Secret are going to have a tough time holding. They do have the Nature's Prophet already. They might try to take a fight here, pick off the Pugna early. Blast coming through. They look to stay alive a bit longer. The Fissure just out of range on Fly, but the Lone Druid gets the last hit. So Miracle, already 800 gold banked up after the Midas at eight and a half minutes in. He is on track for a very fast rally. And Secret will find a trade at the top, top lane, but that T1 mid tower, a much bigger claim this early on in the game will just open up access into that dire jungle, being able to kind of move through the mid lane and to the north into That's the dire jungle. Speaking the mid lane, Miracle caught up. Puppy again with the rotation, throwing the remnant out though. We have very low, Miracle's heading towards it. There's the stun through the trees, Miracle surrounded and does get brought down. Secret again, bringing numbers, four heroes and it's about to be five. Looks like they might have a smoke in mind. Immediate smoke from deep in the mid lane. They and won't find the sanking before his blink. Bottom. He's, oh, he's actually gone four star, crit. Interesting little kind of deviation in the build. We'll see if he can scout mm. this one out. He pops, a, maybe get pops a smoke. But they were in the Roshan pit, then he smokes, he popped, and the hero's outside, he didn't actually see. But he seems to have a good idea this is going on. Oh, okay, he is going to yeah. get caught, though. Now he knows, but he's found the hard way. Hex in trouble. The force that pushes him over the fissure is quick and end up living. Looks like he does escape. So the Oblique Dagger would not oh. have done for him. I bit late on the impale there to kind of chain some with the fissure and crit will get away. Oh, that's big. They delay the Roshan. If he goes down there, it's a freebie for secret. Instead, they're afraid to march in. That's mm -hmm. actually, yeah, like you say, it's, that's really big for OG. Having an Aegis early on, it denies it from OG because they're the ones who are going for this timing push around probably kind of 15 to 20 minutes. It depends if they how much they want to wait for the Lone Druid Radiance. Uh, and their timing push is a whole lot stronger if they can get their hands on an Aegis. So if they d deny the Aegis, get themselves some gold and just buy some, buy, buy some time, it really slows down and kind of hurts OG's timing. But... OG prevent it, so really, really nice scouting there coming out from crit. So looking at OG, you're talking about timings. What are the, the key items, levels uh, that you see them waiting for at this point? Prob I mean, the biggest one is the the Radiance on Lone Druid. That's just like the ch changes the entire game. Um, outside of that is your initiation item on Legion Commander, because that's what gives you the pickoff potential on heroes like the Weaver and the Ember Spirit. So be it the Blink Dagger 
or the Shadow Blade, uh, something Winter mentioned you might want to go for instead against the Ember Spirit. Um, no Tails kind of catch is going to be a very key aspect to OG's draft as well this game. Oh, game. an awkward smoke gank here with Fry leading the way. He does get the Decrepify up. That was crit to get in range to counterplay it. Fly using the life drain does get the kill, but now in quite a bit of danger as Weeha goes in with the double damage rune, collects the counter kill. He drops pretty low here. We'll kill off the war, but he gets Burrow Strike and the Ravage gets committed. Weeha goes down. That's a heavy commitment, but well worth it for a crucial Ember Spirit kill. Secret now, two heroes in pursuit onto crit. Anchor Smash comes through, decent damage done, but Pylite I unloads the figure. No-Tail coming with the duel, but they get the stun off, preventing the auto attack damage from No-Tail during this time. And Envy, oh, not quite lucky enough there. We'll end up going down to one follow-up Anchor Smash just before you get time lapse. Still no dual damage, but... <laughs> yeah. I, uh, worth it anyway. Yeah, they yeah, commit a Ravage, sure. they get an Ember, they commit a duel, they get a Weaver. No. OG using their key ultimates perfectly here. I mean, no tail could go this entire game. Like let's let's just say you, his ultimate just didn't give you bonus damage, and the hero would still be justifiable as a pick. They're not picking the hero expecting to get lots of bonus damage out of the duel. It's lockdown. It helps boost up the bear with the push from the press the attack. And oh, puppy. puppy had the echo. He drops it on Moon. Also prevents the tower from going down. Gets the deny. El Capitan. Coming up big in the clutch, but Miracle is farming. He continues to do so bottom lane. Gets the tower last hit. 2,800 gold, so the relic timing still on track. Here we see the Sprout on fly bottom lane, and now the Ember Spirit of Weehan lurching forward, but gets roared back. Well played there. Not sure Fly makes it out anyway. That small skeletal man unable to limp out. Miracle, though, looks like he will escape. Meanwhile, down in the river, our Sand King has finally got an epicenter. Crit, level 8 now, so fully operational. Minus the, the absence of the yep. Blink Dagger, I suppose. Yeah, as far as the four stuff goes, it is an, a nice kind of little change up because it does give you a nice little boost your mana pool. When you hit that Blink Brown Boots timing of Sand King, you barely have enough mana. Like, you can either get two Burrow Strikes off in the fight or you get a Burrow plus an Epicenter. Very rarely can you get a third spell off. Unless like you have a lot burrow. of stick charges. Yeah, without having 10 to 15 one charges. So. Just means he has a bigger mana pool. It means he can it's, help out his teammates. It's good against Fissure. We saw that earlier. Yeah. Um, and Puppy's had a lot of Fissure blocks. It's also nice against the Sprout just to get teammates out of it without or yourself without having to use Burrow Strike. He so can play a lot more aggressive. He can just walk on in, Burrow Strike, and then still have an escape. If you do that with a Blink Dagger, your Blink Dagger is always going to be disabled. There's Ember Spirit with Flame Guard. There's the Fissure. There's Lion. There's multiple ways to break him out of the Sandstorm. He can't rely on the Sandstorm as a defensive measure against these heroes. So OG are going to group up mid now, and they will make their move Miracle. The man in front, the bear leads the charge. They use Fly here as the heavy artillery to bring down towers. And already a Glyph getting forced out nice and early. Mm -hmm. But while this is happening, we do see Lion farming up the top lane. Looks like he's trying to get his Blink Dagger. Yes, he's And Heck is coming for Moon. In fact, just completed. So OG starting to get some of those key items and levels that you mentioned to yeah. allow for the push. I mean, Pai, he's 1,900 gold. He's very farm for a line. He's had a good game, but OG's timing is coming very soon with the, the Radiance and the Mech on, almost on line together. Ah, the Superman bear. The Lanham Strat coming into play now as they will blast down the tower. Fly the man to get the last hit. And we'll see what the Pugna wants to grab to, to help aid in their push, but now Relic comes online and Lone Druid begins to get a whole lot scarier. I think just an Aether Lens is going to be probably the your best bet for Fly. He's going to be very squishy. He's like the ideal target, but that's where Aether Lens also helps you out because you can stay that much further back using your spells, life draining the spirit bed to keep it healed up. And Envy's, Envy, as well as uh, we, their main jobs are going to be trying to find that Pugna because he's going to be so squishy. You've got the Fire Remnant forward. You've got a Shikuchi to try and initiate on him. If they can catch out that Pugna early on and burst him down, that's going to be the, kind of one of the key to successes in these fights for Team Secret. As for Envy here, let's grab the Mithril Hammer. Likely, oh. likely Desolator coming out, I would say. Yeah. Um, there's there's two things. I mean, the Desolator, the Zesso and the BKB. The BKB allows you just to go very Rambo into the fight um, and find that Pugna and try and kill him off. But the Desso is just your bread and butter DPS. You want to be able to kill the Spirit Bear when it's pushing your high ground. And Desso plus Swarm is one of the safest and best ways to do that. So I'd expect to see the Desolator you mentioned. We'll see what the choice is, but still a little ways to go for Envy before he can grab that. As for Puppy, he's also about to grab a Blink. So we're going to see double Blink Dagger for Secret, and it couldn't come at a better time. OG in the river are starting to think about a Roshan, or potentially going for some of these deeper Tier 2s, Tier 3 towers, and oh, so that makes Secret's high ground defense much, much better. Interesting, Notel has maxed out his moment of courage on Legion Commander. It wasn't just like laning stage, he had two points, I believe, but even since then, he's just kept press the attack at level one. 
So he can can use it as a dispel still, but he doesn't have a the the amazing regen as well as bonus attack speed for the spirit bear when they're pushing. It's a so-so value point, but it definitely it benefits yeah. significantly from the level. It seems to go a little bit against their overall strategy, or maybe it suggests that the overall strategy West they're not as all in on the push as we perhaps maybe thought. Um, gives him a bit more single target killing potential, and with the build he's gone, he didn't go for initiation. He actually went for a tread drum, so his uh, single target kill potential is a lot higher with this build. It's going to be stalling tactics here from Puppy. Drops the Fissure and tries to hang back. Not sure if OG have actually seen the Blink Dagger just said he's got a smoke. They're looking for the big surprise. Meanwhile, Secret Trainer Rosha and the Desolator just delivered out for Envy, but it has slowed down the push. Moon, the man in front, and here comes Puppy. Let's the Echo go in. So finger, they pull up Moon. He doesn't get off the Ravage. Now they move forward. Stone comes under Weeha. No Tail holding the duel for now. Doesn't choose to pop it. It seems OG just want to get the hell out. Good Savage were there by Miracle to allow himself to escape, and then Moon commits. He gets the duel. He will get the kill there on Puppy. He actually tanks through a lot of the secret damage. He's blown the majority of the load here, but Envy arrives. And there's the counter play, looking for the overwhelming odds. They stun until they lock him in position. Looks like they'll finish him up too. Great high ground hold thus far from Team Secret, not losing the melee Rex. Crit into the trees, four step up to the high ground. Tries for the TP out. They've lost three. Oh, there's the chase we. from Weeha. Runs him down. That's going to be four heroes. The Blink Dagger surprise. Puppy with the perfect smoke. Make it all the difference, yeah. no Ravage, and from there it gets so much harder. And the timing of everything coming together there was just so perfect for Secret. OG go for the high ground Rax push without a Roshan, without an Aegis, and with great intent because they ex they're not aware of those blink daggers being up as early as they are they're not expecting they're thinking maybe lion he's who was like four and one i think before that fight he's now six and one maybe he's close to his blink dagger but the shaker you're not expecting puppy to have this really fast blink up out of nowhere and that is what completely catches him by surprise you don't anticipate your tide getting taken out unable to to ravage at the start of a fight but the burst damage from the echo plus finger was just too much for him to kind of sustain against and perfect initiation from team secret and normally when you have a tide hunter right it's like he's gonna get his ravage off yeah. unless it's up against like an enigma or you know a disruptor like some or a void you someone's gonna your, counter your arky or your viki if you're but they had the double signature. blink and yeah. they had so much disable and they committed a finger on him oftentimes he just gets ignored so moon Perhaps a bit of false confidence there. If you're OG, obviously looking back on it, that didn't work. Should they have just slowed it down and gone for Roshan? Uh, or was it just more a matter of positioning and that siege could have worked if they were positioned It better? was, in my mind, totally the right play. They don't know the Blink Daggers are. They just didn't have all the information available to them. The, the Blinks and the Deso had been picked up like 30 moments seconds ago. before moments that, ago. that push comes. If there's no Blink on Earthshaker, and it's not it's not so much the Lion Blink. I think they're expecting the Lion early Blink. If the Earthshaker doesn't have Blink, that's a Rax right there. There's no way that Secret can defend. May, if it's not a Rax, Secret defend it by throwing lives at them and having to buy back. That's, that's just like the game is potentially just one from that push if there's no Shaker Blink. Well, we talked about Secret having a lineup that wanted to split push, and it's going to get easier as this game goes on. Envy now with an Aegis also building straight into a Lincoln Sphere. And the Lincolns is going to be huge this game. Can no longer blink duel him. The blink burrow strike won't be a great initiation either. And he's pretty much going to have total freedom on the map at that point. Oh, top lane. They're hunting for no tail. Pretty tanky. Does have the blade mail. This is not an easy kill. Yeah. But with the <laughs> hex. Can Without it finger. It's prevent like... him from popping it possibly. It's like, yeah, I don't think you want to go for that no tail. They're, they're also finger. seeing moon and fly in the vicinity. Yeah. So I think and... content here just to, just to farm with Envy. Now OG are going to have to kind of wait out this Aegis a bit. They've got the hood on Moon, which is pretty big, because next time he's on the high ground, he can actually pop the hood as a self-barrier. It's 12 seconds where you get that magic sh magic shield, and that would have kept him alive against that Echo plus Lion Finger. He would have been able to get off a Ravage with this item. And OG may actually not even... Because of this new item pickup, I think they're a lot stronger than Team Secret in a team fight scenario now, dis despite there being an Aegis on the side of Secret. So they're actually looking to fight looking to hunt down Team Secret right now. Yeah, of course, he does need to, to get it off, but as long as he times it right, should be in good shape. Vlad's now up on the lone druid, so slow item progression here. Envy doing a good job of catching up as this game moves along. And the smoke gank from OG looks like it won't pay off. They're going to swing back through their jungle. Envy keeping the pressure up in the top lane and chipping away. This is Team Secret in their comfort zone now. They have the items, the, the Aegis, to be able to get away with more aggressive split pushing. 
and with it, OG are not as confident about trying to break the base. Absolutely. And we Tempo's kinda, going their way. We talked about how Team Secret would be looking to play much more spread around the map, split push, a bit kind of greedy in some ways, but less as like a five-man unit. And it's not all speaking to their, the fact they don't play as a team. If anything, we're seeing for the, for the first time in a while a clear strategy forming for Team Secret. Uh, they make a move here on Weeha, but he blinks out uh, remnants away in the nick of time. So... Still split push from Envy. Very confident. No tell thinking about a jump in, but Envy's just gonna back himself away. Time lapse is out. We'll retreat. So secret. That DE efficiency. Oh, I just got 150 damage in your tower, and he was gonna TP back home anyways to heal up, I guess. Jackie Mount Dota. He's gonna be perhaps the most efficient player in, in, in the Dota scene. Sometimes he tries to be too efficient. <laughs> I mean, it's not efficiency if you yeah, die, yeah. though, right? <laughs> so, I mean, when he's when he's not dying, at his he's best, the most he's probably player, the most yeah. efficient. I'll give you that. So pipe coming out for Ty, just looking to stay alive, not even prioritizing any blink initiate. He realizes he needs to kind of be on the front lines. He needs to be standing next to the spirit bear in some ways. Otherwise, secret do have the capabilities to just chain stun the bear, kill it off with the Deso Weaver with swarm. So he kind of has to be standing up there in front as well. So when is the? Is there still a timer on OG? Do they just want to take the slate? Like, what's the the game plan from here? Obviously, losing a lot of momentum from that first push attempt. Aegis is going to be expiring here momentarily. Do you wait for the next rush? Do you go now? I mean, overall, that game plan can still work. At I, I don't feel like there's a, a, an urgent timer on their lineup. At, it, all it's going to take is one kind of key pickoff, which is going to get a lot easier. I think Legion Commander likely to go back for it. Yeah, there we go. Blink Dagger. Um, he needs an initiation item because plan A was the let's just five man push. It doesn't. Legion's going to go for this stat heavy build with drums, one. Blade Mail gives you good damage, armor, intelligence, kind of just good stats and buffs you up. And then they're just going to be out of five man push. And it's not even going to matter if they don't have pick off because they have such a stronger five man unit. They There's no way Secret can fight them. They were hoping to hit that timing before the blinks. When that fails, the backup is. We're going to be able to have this strong push, but before we can push, we've got to find a pick-off. So they get the Blink Dagger on Legion Commander. They've got the Sand King to initiate and find pick-offs as well. Uh, Crit's going into an Aghanim Scepter to get an even longer range initiation. And finding pick-offs on Secret. Oh, they is find the key. pick mid. It looks like the duel coming through to yeah. Weeha. Can he jump out in time? Nope, they get him. And finally, no tell. We've got a winner. Plus 14 dual damage for him. His first of the game. So the, the Blink just catching... We can, uh, out there by surprise. The glue's getting to envy. <laughs> oh. This has got to feel good for no tail. Just the word winner permanently affixed to your head. Mine says uh, winner in oh, Chinese. Using, oh, this, is, this is awesome. Oh, we, you can learn Chinese now. That's oh, great. Oh, man. Look at the Chinese characters above his head. It's actually, they're really faded out compared to the yeah, yeah. the Roman characters. Alright, here, OG go. Heading yep. towards the top lane. They get the pick, now there is a buyback on the Ember Spirit, but it's going to delay the battle for you a lot if they can force it. Yep, find pick off, go push. And either you, if you don't have to, have to necessarily get a Rax, but forcing out a buyback Bobby, or something. It's going to be the same formula. Fissure to block the wave. They'll probably pop the smoke momentarily. This time they need a out. pipe on moon though. But they have the high ground observer ward, so they are going to scout out Puppy here momentarily. He's just out of observer ward range. He's right on the boundary of it. Actually, they haven't seen him yet, as it is currently nighttime. Sitting back, they're working on the Ranger Axe. Pile die coming in off the bat, but the Pugna ward's there to counter initiate a bit. And now No Tail jumping forward. Not going to actually lock down Envy there. Has the duel ready to go. Oh, geez, and no Lincolns yet. Moon's up in front. The pipe's there. And Fly sits back. He's actually using the heal on the moon as Miracle's bear beats away at the tower. They'll maul it down. Now they need to get out safely. Secret. That was not in a great position. Too. That was a very good siege. And they're not done yet. They jump onto Envy. They find the duel. They're going to get the kill. No tail. Two in a row. Now going for the TP out. Can they cancel it? Pilot dies there with the hex. The fissure comes through. Puppy locking on the back lights. Then the finger committed. But no tail kept alive. There's the man. They can't finish him off yet. The bear comes in as well. The ward again holding on. But no tail will finally fall. Almost getting the kill there on Misery, courtesy of the Blade Mail. We'll end up dropping 16 to 9 the score, but overall a clean take. They didn't even use a Ravage, let alone an Epicenter. Yeah. And last time they went for that push, I mean, it wasn't even it, when we talked about the Blink Daggers, but it was also just the position on the high ground. This time around, it was only the Spirit Bear and the Tide in, in front. So when Puppy could potentially go for a Blink Echo, which he didn't actually end up using, 
It's because there's no opportunities. The only echo slam available to him is the Tide with the Spirit Bear. The previous fight, it was the Tide, the Spirit Bear, and the Lone Druid in that top lane. Lone Druid al almost died. It felt like he should have died in that last push. He TP'd away on 50 HP. This time around, OG, they position the Pugna at the back, just healing people up. The Sand King's really far away, ready for a, a long-range initiation if needed, and OG just very polished execution on the high ground oh, push Secret there. are looking to make a move here, interrupt this OG momentum. Puppy committing an Echo Slam, jumping onto the Sand Cage. Fissure connects on two, but now they might get turned on Moon Pops the Pipe. Let's out the Ravage, Pilot die getting locked down by this Puppy, getting smacked down by Miracle. He's going to be insta rooted. he'll go down, and then in the mid lane, there's the dual Pie to fall as well, and Secret getting run over. OG just going to barrel down mid right now. Look to force out these buybacks. There's no Echo Slam. Finger's still on cooldown for 20 seconds. Profit hold on cooldown for a minute. And it's enter rat mode if you're secret. They'll try to push in the bottom lane. But I'm not sure they can keep up with the bear. Puppy's gonna buy back, needs to get this fissure block off. And oh, it does keep the bear on the wrong side of it. So this will delay the push by a couple of seconds. But soon, that fissure's gonna still evaporate. No good, though, Meanwhile, Secret are taking out the tier 3 tower in the bottom lane, but OG, they're gonna look for the melee racks here, Prince and it will be at least at 2 for base. 1. Looks like he's gonna try to hold this, locking down Misery, the po Nature's Prophet low, not dead just yet, goes for the Sprout, summons the Triads. They still haven't brought down the melee racks here, though, and while that's happening, OG have already claved into, they might even, oh, looks like they were thinking about the tier 4 for a split second. Envy, also getting caught out here by Crit, still has the time lapse, is gonna use it relatively early. Lone Druid, TPing home, looks like that got cancelled by Puppy, good job there on the Airshaker to prevent him from getting back, but still Envy low, he gets the melee rack, squirms into the trees, Crit has a Burrow Strike ready, he expected Envy to go down, but he's in range for the Burrow back up! He gets the envy kill, and they might even just continue pressing in now. Oh, gee, do they go for the throw they, here? They should They're thinking about it. They yeah. duel, they catch up. Puppy Shaker next on the list. Oh, gee, snowballing out of control this game. They're still losing in kills, but winning in objectives. No tell with the blade now. There's the finger suicide, and they do a style pilot die. We'll go to the well and think about how much that one hurt. Still left a mark. Oh, gee. Taking over here and dominating Secret. The timings were on point, and even though Secret had a mo an incredibly good hold from a deficit earlier, the second time was the trick. They didn't even need a third. Well, it's the trees in base. Moon with the BM branch plays. Oh, you gotta love it. Well, Crit Bit at the Frankfurt styling. Major, he said, Secret, Moon's we're overrated. Done. He's he's grown a garden. He's like, I've got one beautiful flower on my team. I need a few beautiful trees here. Some happy little trees. What now, Team Secret? What now? Uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Part one of Team OG's revenge is complete. <laughs> well, it looks like, at least for this game, Crit was right. Secret, well, he fired some shots at the Frankfurt Major. He backed it up then. So far, they're backing it up now. They will take game one here, but...